Hi. All right. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. Good morning. Good morning. You made it through the storm. Praise Ooh. the Lord. Ooh. We're going to open up this morning with birthdays because it's the first Sunday in December. All right. And we always want to celebrate birthdays. So we start off the month of December with a bang. On December 2nd, we have our wonderful Pastor Raymond Glory. Yay. Yay! December 9th, we have Dallas Morrissey. All right, Dallas. December 10th, we have Vicky Davis. Happy birthday, Vicky. December 14th, we have Haley O'Connor. December 16th, we have Healy Goodness Glory. Uh, also on the 16th, we have Uncle Wendell Kalema Mahu. December 17th, our sister Keala Soros. December 19th, we have Robert Hughes. December 21st, we have our youth group, uh, Sela Fisher. On the same day, the 21st, we have Uncle Eddie Glendon. And on the 29th, we have our sister Elaine Reed. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So I'll, I'll open us up in prayer and then we'll sing happy birthday if we can bow our heads. Father God, what a blessing it is that we can gather this morning in your name and praise you and worship you, Father God. We want to put you first. We want to glorify you. We want to honor you this morning. Father, we just, we pray for um, your Holy Spirit to just flow freely in this place. We pray that, that, that you be blessed by the fellowship we have this morning. We pray that everyone be blessed by your word this morning, Father God. We just love you. We honor you. We praise you and we pray in Christ Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Fridays when I'm here, weed whacking, I speak drum. When I'm home riding my tractor, I speak drum. Drum sounds like this. It's my worship language. All of creation, 
Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you as a true family of the God who is above all. And Father, we thank you for this divine blessing that by and through your Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord and King, we are the true children of the God who is above all. And Father, we ask for your blessings to be on our brothers and sisters who are before you and on your and on my brothers and sisters that are still on the way. Let your heads of protection be over them. Bring them here safely. And for those of our brothers and sisters who are unable to come, let your blessings be on them, Father God, that they will know that they know that you are with us 24-7. Oh, Father God, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. And we pray your blessings on all of our brothers and sisters in the most gracious name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and King. And all of your children say, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Certainly, it's always easy to bring yourself before the Lord and begin to worship him, especially during this time of year. But, um, you know, if you walk in a room now, because it's decorated up so nicely, I go, I'm from a generation that I remember Liberty House when there was a Liberty House. It was the high-end store. And we, my family, and all many others, we used to make our way to the Liberty House store so we could take our picture in front of the beautiful decorations. And, and I always thought, well, now you don't have to go to the Liberty House store, one, because there's no more Liberty House store. And two, you just can come here because you can, first you can get your picture taken with the white background. And then after that, you go over there and get your picture taken with the with the Christmas tree background. It's just so glorious. And I wanted to uh, ask if we just take a minute to uh, appreciate the decorating elves that come. In. Glorious Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say,
sing once more. Sing from the top. Because of who you are. Sing to the top. Because of who you are. I get this. I get this. Get 
so I don't feed back on everybody. Yeah, go stand over here. Hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I have, uh, I've been blessed to bring you communion this morning, communion meditation. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go right into it and start off. During the American Civil War, there was a general, and his name was John Magruder. And he had probably about 10,000 men or so. And he was staring across the Potomac River, looking at the battle line. And he was like, wow, there's a lot of them. Now his opponent, McClellan, was a very cautious man. Very, very cautious. And Magruder gave him something really cautious, to be, well, something to be cautious about. Magruder was a man who liked amateur theatrical performances. He was known for going to theaters and stuff like that. And he was really into acting. He liked it a lot. And he was enthusiastic and he was a good actor himself. And he gave the performance of his life that day. The bulk of his men, he set the bulk of his men to convincing the enemy that they were outnumbered. And that they faced a numerically superior force, if I can put it into good grammatical terms. And one of these deceptions that he did is worth noting. So there was a big forest over there across the Potomac where um, Magruder was. And normally soldiers marching through that front, they can't be seen, right? Because the forest is covering them. But then there's patches that are clear. So what the general did was <clears throat> he lined up a few men and he sent them through that patch over and over and over again. Just the clear patch. And of course, the Union Army, they're watching and they're like, hey, general, you're right. You are totally right. We're about to be attacked by thousands and thousands of people. Deception. That's my point. Deception is an art of war as well as an art of theater. And guess what? Our enemy uses deception too. There's deception of the body. Have you heard? Oh, you must be the right color. You must have the right tan or the lightest skin. Drink the right drinks. Don't drink this drink, drink that drink. Wear the right clothing. Eat at the right restaurants. You know, don't eat at McDonald's. You know, go to another restaurant that is, you know, more pious and cautious, whatever you want to call it. Anyhow, <clears throat> there's deception of the mind. He also deceives our mind. Life consists entirely of the toys that you buy. That was me. When the woman gets older, divorce her and get a younger model. Have you heard that before? Drive the right car and show the world just how important you are. Deception. And of course, there's deception of the soul. The wariness of things obtained. The wariness of things obtained. The more you get, guess what? the more you worry. The truly sophisticated think this way, indeed, to, point where, to the point where Saturday night never meets Sunday morning in your mind. But through a little clearing, the truth can be seen. You've arrived at that clearing this morning. For the Lord's Supper, you can proclaim the truth. You proclaim to him to be both, you proclaim him to be both God and man. Worthy to be worshipped. Human to be our atonement. You proclaim his death on the cross, atoning for our sins. You proclaim his resurrection, the triumph over the grave. 
You proclaim his coming again soon. Soon, Lord, soon. Fear not. The truth is ever in the light. As our sacraments are being passed out this morning, I implore you to search your heart. Come out of the thickness of that forest that's concealing what needs to be brought to the light. Lay down those deceptions and be cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Most of all, ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. To bring light to the darkness in the forest of your life. Just contemplate on that for a few moments. I got to get mine. Sorry. No worries. So at the last supper, the Passover Seder that night, Jesus sitting there with his disciples, he took the loaf of bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and he passed it to his disciples and he said, take this, each of you, and eat from it. For this is my body, which will be broken for you. Let's eat together. And in the same manner, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he told his disciples, take this, each of you, and drink from it. For this is my blood, which will be shed for you in the new covenant. Let's drink together. Just take a moment to contemplate and meditate. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for taking it for us, for taking all of our sins, Father. We thank you for taking them and never giving them back to us, Father. We thank you for the sacrifice you made on the cross that day so that we may have eternal life. We thank you, Lord, because each and every one of us know that we should be up on that cross and not you. For you were sinless, but you loved us so much that you took it for us. And we thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. James of the New Testament is a really great um it's a great book. We've studied it many times in different studies, small group studies. We've looked at it over uh, as a topic or as a central book when we have had messages presented here. James chapter two and in verse 23 speaks of Abraham when it said, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him. He got credit as being righteous. It was credited to him as righteousness. And that verse says, verse 23, in the New International Version, he was called God's friend. We're going to sing about that now. Who am I? 
Just wave from across the room. Be sure to see the people that are seated on the lanai because they'd like to say hi to you. And please be sure to see Chris who's got the camera so that you can say hi, how's it, aloha to all of the people that are tuning in on Zoom. Good morning, the whole volcano. Yeah. Love, I love seeing the fellowship so much, so much. You know, we have so much to be thankful for in this season, but I got to say one thing that I'm super thankful for is that our brother Kea got us on the wireless mic so I, I can walk around and talk now. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. I'm so happy. I'm so thankful. Because um, you guys know I kind of keep still, yeah? Uh, so we've got some announcements for you this morning, but as you know, first Sunday of the month, we partake in communion and we also pray a blessing over all the children. So we'd like to, if you're here, call up all the children, 18 and under, please come up and be blessed this morning. Auntie Stacy will pray for us this morning. So please come on up and be blessed. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to thank Chris for uh, getting the craft fair bake sale put together to, uh, yesterday. It was such a blessing to have people in the church come together and also people outside of the church come to the church um, to be blessed. Um, we were able to get a little bit of something from almost every station, and we were able to bless double because we were able to um, bless the people that we bought from, but also bless the people that were gift, gifting those gifts to. So um, if you didn't come, you missed out. <laughs> you really missed out. There are some awesome things there. 
uh, Kale was giving away stuff. There was stuff from the thrift store. People like baked goods. The children baked goods. Um, and oh my gosh, there was just so much things. Like I had, I told Jason go to the ATM because we don't have enough money. So uh, <laughs> it was a blessing. Thank you, Chris, for doing that. Um, and I want to give a special thank you to these kids who worked extremely hard the week before in cleaning out the youth building so that there would be room for these vendors. Give them a round of applause. They came on their weekend when they could have been doing anything else but cleaning. They came, they were cleaning windows, they were scrubbing down the furniture, they were vacuuming, they were getting rid of old garbage, uh, reorganizing, they worked very, very hard. Um, there were also some other kikis here. They're not here today, but yeah, we just want to lift them up and thank them this morning for their hearts of, um, to come and serve. <laughs> um, and we just want to lift our hands to them right now and pray for them because they really, truly are a gift from God. Father God, we come before you, Lord, and we thank you for the kids that are here today, Father God, that came here to serve you, to honor you to glorify you, to worship you, Father God. We thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. May you bless their hearts, Father God. May you bless their minds, Father God. Con continue to mold them into the women and gentlemen that you intend for them to be, Father God. Continue to touch their lives, Father God. <clears throat> continue to put people and circumstances in their lives, Father God, to reveal yourself even more to them, Father God to humble them, to keep them humble, Father God, but also to know their worth, that they are children of the most high God, that they are fearfully, wonderfully made, that they are chosen, that they are loved by an almighty God who is good, who is just. We thank you, Lord, for them. We thank you for Isaiah, Father God, that he cried this morning because he wasn't able to pass out the communion because he wants to serve you. We thank you for his heart, Father God. We thank you for Ka'anoi, Father God, that she has the courage to stand up on this stage and worship you, Father God, playing that bass, Father God, all to bring glory to your name. We thank you for Coral, that she is on the communications team, that she also has a, a servant's heart, Father God, a, a heart of Mary and a heart of Martha, Father God to come to church, to serve you, to serve others, to get to know you more, Father God, to walk with you. We thank you for Kalea, that she's in that AV room every morning doing the, the worship lyrics, Father God, and she is on it. We thank you for her heart, Father God. May you continue to bless these kids, Father God, keep them safe, keep them healthy, continue to lead them and guide them, protect them, Father God. And we pray over the kids that weren't able to make it today, Father God that you bless them, that you give them comfort, peace, joy, wrap them in your love, Father God, and make them know that they know that they know that they are children of the most high God. And they have the same authority as Jesus, Father God, that they can do all things through Christ who gives them strength. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, my announcement this morning, ladies, we are taking a break this month, December 25th. Um, just enjoy your time with your family. Celeb don't forget to celebrate Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's not about us. It's about him and the birth of Mary and what he came in this world to do, which I can't talk about it without crying. So you know what it is, right? <laughs> you know what it is. Um, we will resume January 29th over Zoom. I'm hoping and praying that a miracle happens, that we don't have to wear this mask and we can do it in person. Um, but you know what? Zoom is okay too. It's been a blessing for me. I know it's been a blessing for my other sisters um, for us to dive into our words and just to be there for one another, because it's important. It's important that we fellowship with each other, that we're able to confess, that we're able to pray for one another. It really has been a blessing to my life. 
Um, if you're not a part of this group and you want to be, please let me know. Give me your email. I can give you the information. If you're on Zoom, please reach out to Chris. Aloha. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, we've got a few more announcements for you this morning. Um, you know, I just wanted to add to Stacy and, and Chris will come up and talk about it, but that was a blast yesterday. That craft fair was a blast. We had so much people that we knew from outside the church that came in and got to see the church for the first time. And, um, you know, we're just so thankful and blessed. And I wanted to say, um, Jeannie, aside from Chris, I felt like you had the hardest job because we were only allowed to have five people in that room uh, in the in the youth group. And Jeannie was like, hey, you got to wait. We got five. You got to wait. If it was me, I'd be like, God, just go. Everybody go in there. So you had a tough job. And, and, and I appreciate that. Um, so the first or the second announcement will come from Auntie Lani. She had something to share with us this morning. Auntie. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. Um, I just wanted to apologize, first of all, because usually every year at this time, the first Sunday of the month is we start Advent, and Advent is a time of preparation for the birth of Jesus, and we should do that every day. We should be on our knees in our prayer time and, and say, I want to be prepared to receive you today, whatever blessings you have. So uh, the other thing was <laughs> I couldn't find any taper candles especially purple. And uh, so um, just in your heart, you know that there's the little um, advent wreath there and we'll light a candle. We could light a candle. Um, but anyway, just uh, this, this season is about Jesus. And I think everybody in this room knows that. And it's just a reminder to prepare our hearts each and every day for receiving him. Thank you. <laughs> Did you want to mention about the stuff? Oh, yes. Um, we have the leftovers of what we didn't sell yesterday. And if it's all right with the rest of the thrift team, can we just, if, if they want it, just take it. Just please take if you find you have use for it. Uh, you're welcome to it. Otherwise, it'll just go back to the thrift shop and we'll try to sell it next time. So thank you. Love you guys. All right. So thank you, Auntie. And so it's on the back table. If you want to go and see after service, you can check it out. Um, we pray it be a blessing to you. It'd be a blessing for us that we wouldn't have to put it away. So if you want to take it, please feel free to do so. Um, our next announcement comes from our sister, Chris. my new mask I got at the craft fair <laughs> okay so yes it was so exciting and we have so many people to say thank you to um so exciting um so we have um the Christmas fair team which we hope to grow so if you're interested in being in the Christmas fair team let me know because you know it'll be around before we know it um David Kea Kalea Coral and I don't know why I'm so emotional. I'm so excited. Jeannie, Jeannie, Jeannie heard me make the announcement that, um, that we needed people. And she said, I don't know what I can do, but let me know. So yeah, she did a great job. I was like, I, you know, it's hard to tell people we have to follow the county regulations and, you know, but the people were pretty nice, weren't they? Yeah, they window shopped while they stood outside. So we're introducing an old concept. <laughs> and um, Kea served coffee, cocoa, and he got to talk about Celebrate Recovery. And there was a couple of people who were very interested. So that was awesome. Um, the Friday men took down those tables out there. And then I couldn't believe Stuart, Don, Lori, Uncle Wendell, and Robert were out there putting them back up already. I thought they might just wait till Friday, but that was awesome. So just get them right back up. And then Stacy and Jason and the youth for cleaning that building. You know, the first they walked in there and they said, Oh, so much cleaner than last year. They really noticed, you know, because some people like that building, they actually requested that building. So that was awesome. And then we got this, everything set up in the inner lanai, like in 10 minutes, it was amazing. 
because we had Uncle Moku, Coral, Kalea, Kaunoe, Auntie Jane, Auntie Bobby, Auntie Barb, Auntie Marianne, David Kea, Kala, and Miley. Everybody was just boom. It was amazing getting that all fixed up. And most of all, we have to thank God because this storm was supposed to be yesterday. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, we were a little worried, but um, somebody texted me and said, How's the weather? And I said, Getting better with every prayer. So keep on praying. <laughs> And then, um, you know, our goal was to um, just get people used to coming to the church, get people, you know, and one lady came inside and the Auntie Bobby got to talk to her about the service and about what we do. Hallelujah. That was the goal. Just one person. Yeah. And then um, if I missed anybody, Remember, Pastor Ray talked about invisible service. <laughs> so thank you for your invisible service. I hope I got everybody though. And um, we're going to start thinking about a spring, a, a spring fair. So if you want to be on the spring fair team, let me know. And then back to our regular announcements. Monday, people want to pray. So let them know what to pray for. On Wednesday, we have Bible study, five o'clock in person and on Zoom. Thursday night, hula, four o'clock men's ministry on the 18th at 9 a.m. in person and on Zoom, women's ministry. Stacy covered it completely, except that we have to read first and second Chronicles, right? Yep, yep. And I think Pat, um, Christmas Eve service is going to be at 5 p.m. on the 24th, Christmas Eve. And then David Kaya wants to talk about Celebrate Recovery. Mahalo. <laughs> Hi, church. <clears throat> Real quick announcement about Celebrate Recovery. I'd like to share a scripture with you. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 12 to 13. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful you don't fall. No temptation is overtaking you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so you can endure it. And that's called Celebrate Recovery. Come see us on Friday nights. All right. So we've just, we've got only a couple more announcements. Uh, Chris mentioned Christmas Eve service will be at 5 p.m., not 6 p.m. So, uh, yeah, if you want to invite somebody, uh, Christmas Eve would be a great time to do so. Um, that is all I have for announcements. So, of course, we like to direct your attention to the website. Um, you know, something cool, I'm not sure if you guys know, Isaiah's been playing the drums a little bit. He's been playing the drums. He's got a little drum set. And so I was talking with Kalei about it, and he said that it'd be a good idea to put the headphones on Isaiah and listen to Pastor Ray's service. And he can practice along with Pastor Ray as Pastor Ray is singing on YouTube. So we do have a YouTube channel and you can check it out. You just go to YouTube, type in New Hope Volcano and it'll come up and you can see all of the services, even the special services that we have that Chris comes in and records. She posts those as well. So if you've missed Thanksgiving service or, or any of the other services, you can find that on YouTube. On our website, we normally post the notes for today so if you're at home we have the notes there for you uh, and we also normally post the video message of the day after service and chris has been super fast it's, it's been going up within an hour or two after service so you can check it out right away not always but but most of the time an hour or two after service it's posted uh, on the website as well there is a place where you can give online and we like to mention that every week because it's a very um, convenient and safe way to give your tithe or your offering. Uh, so if you'd like to do that, you go to the website, newhopevolcano.com, click on the link, you enter your information, and you can give your tithe or offering that way. If you're in person this morning and you'd like to give your tithe or your offering in person, we have the offering bow in the back by Grandma Sue's chair where Auntie Bobby's sitting this morning. So you can give your tithe or offering that way. All of that being said, we also like to make sure we say if you're visiting us for the first time 
please hold back on your money and just be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you this morning. If you're visiting us from another church, we ask that you too, please hold back on your money and take it to your home church. And if this is your church, we ask that you please give with a cheerful heart. Uh, if we can bow our heads. Heavenly Father, this morning we bow our heads and we lift our hearts up to you, Father God, and we just want to thank you. We humbly come before you and we just thank you for all that you do in our lives, for all that you are in our lives, all that you do for us and all that you do through us. We're so grateful for this church, this church family. We're so grateful for all the ways that you provide for us. We're so grateful that we have a God who loves us the way that you do. And this morning, we want to lift our tithes and our offerings up to you. We pray that you multiply it in abundance. We pray that you use it according to your will. Father, we just thank you for this church. We thank you for this building that we can come and gather in your name. And we just pray a blessing this morning over everyone who is here in person and on Zoom. And we pray for those who are not here and who could not make it. Father God, we just love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen, amen. All right, good morning, good morning, church. As you can see, I have been blessed once again with an opportunity to share the word of God with you this morning. And it's December already, guys. You know, I come up here every, every week and I'm like, we're getting closer to the new year, closer to the new year. And here we are in December. And I can't believe how quickly that went by. And to be honest with you, I'm looking forward to 2022 and I'm praying that things will be different next year in so many different ways but today this morning I get to share the word of God with you and this morning's message is entitled in the name of the father and we'll be looking to, uh, into the bible to learn about the different names of God and why it is so important that we know them and what is in a name we put so much thought and so much effort in naming our children. Sometimes we name them after ourselves. I've definitely thought about that with Isaiah. Sometimes we name them after famous people or someone that we know. And, and the truth is, if I was the one who named Isaiah, his name wouldn't have been Isaiah. I would have named him after my favorite basketball player in the world's greatest center, Shaquille O'Neal. I... I <laughs> I proposed the name Shaxton, and I'm still kind of fond of it, to be honest with you, so that he would have been Shaxton Morton if I had my way. <laughs> and so, you know, names are so important. People are given nicknames sometimes. You know, if someone's nickname is Slim, you kind of, you kind of know why he has that nickname. When I was playing football, we had a coach named Coach Fats. I don't know if you know him or not, but you can kind of understand why he would have that name. <clears throat> and then I remember when I was young, standing in line with my dad for hours in the Principal Hill Plaza to go and get an autograph from the football player, Eric Dickerson. He came to the Principal Hill Plaza and he signed his name on a football. And I just treasured that football because it had his name on him. The Bible says that God has over 950 names in the Bible. And knowing these names gives us insight to who he is and what he has done. It helps us to become more intimate with God, to know him better. Some other religions have many different gods, often referred to as deities. And it's funny because although that those gods are worshipped, they only do one or two things. For instance, Anubis, the Egyptian god of the dead. That's all he is, is the god of the dead. Eros, the Greek god of fertility. Adonis, the god of rebirth. Apollo, the god of light. Ganesh, a Hindu god with an elephant head. And he's the patron of intelligence and wisdom. Ra, an Egyptian god or a solar deity. So many different gods for so many different things. And God forbid you have more than one problem because you'd be worshiping all these different gods all day long. The main difference between Christianity and these other religions is that we worship a God who is in everlasting pursuit of his people. 
In the book of Song of Solomon, we studied this in our Wednesday night group, chapter 7, verse 10. The Bible says, the writer says, I belong to my beloved, speaking of God, and his desire is for me. And I've shared that scripture with you before because it's so deep, it's so intimate. God's desire is for us. He desires to be with us, to be in our presence. From the very beginning, when he created Adam and Eve, his desire was to live amongst his creation. And his desire in this very moment is to live in spirit amongst his children, you and I. We honor a God who is in love with us and longs for our attention and our affection in every way. And so this morning, I wanted to look at some of the names of God and how knowing these names can help us to know God more intimately. So we'll begin with number one. Number one, if you have notes, you can fill it in. Number one is Abba, and that stands for Father. The book of Romans, chapter 8, and verse 15, the word says, So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. You receive God's spirit when he has adopted you as his own children. Now we can call him Abba, Father. We are children of the Most High God, and we have been adopted into the kingdom of heaven through the blood ransom sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we now have the privilege and honor to call God Abba, Father. When Stacy and I first found out she was expecting, it was one of the most exciting days of my life. And Stacy and I prayed every day together. We prayed, Lord, please allow our baby to be safe. Please allow our baby to be healthy. Allow the delivery to go smoothly with no troubles. And I would always end the prayer in saying, and, and God, if it's not too much to ask, please bless us with a baby boy. A special request at the end, at the end. Everything else was more important. But if it wasn't too much to ask, if you could please bless us with a baby boy. And I remember when we found out that we were having a boy, it was so exciting. And I remember Googling how to be a great father. Because as you know, I love to Google everything, right? And there were tons of results. And I came across a Christian website that gave 10 characteristics of a good father. And I wanted to share with you this morning three of them because I Googled them again and I, I was able to find them. Three characteristics of a good father that I always try to apply in my relationship with Isaiah, but it also reflects our relationship with God and how our Father God treats us as his children. So the first characteristic of a good father, number one, is a good father loves his children. As parents, we have a love for our children that is unlike anything else in the world. It's like no other love that we have ever felt before. And I can see it in my wife's eyes when I see her look at Isaiah. And I'm up here trying to explain it to you, but it's unexplainable. We love our children in all of their imperfections. And sometimes we feel like we love them to a fault. Sometimes we give them so much grace and love that we feel like they take advantage of it. But God, God demonstrates his own love for us in this, the Bible says. Oh, we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's the book of Romans, chapter 5 and verse 8. God shows love for his children that even while we were still sinners, while we were still unrighteous and undeserving, he sent Christ to die for us. God's love is truly unconditional. And what do we have to do to deserve his love? Just be his children. Just accept his love. Just call him Abba, Father. That's all we have to do. The second characteristic of a good father is a good father will protect his children. I'm a little embarrassed to say, but if I really had my way, I would go everywhere with Isaiah. I would be sitting next to him in class. I would be in his jujitsu uh, practice sitting next to him. I would protect him from bullies. I would protect him from getting his feelings hurt. 
and I would protect his little precious innocent heart from getting broken. If I had my way, that's what I would do. And we all want to protect our children from harm and prevent them from experiencing some of the bad things that we have experienced in our own lives. And I spent a lot of time in the youth group telling the kids, hey, I was your age once. Trust uncle. Uncle knows. Don't do what I did. I'm trying to protect them from experiencing some of the bad experiences that I have felt in my life. And so the Apostle Paul proposes this question in Romans chapter 8, verses 31 and in 33. He says, if God is for us, who can be against us? And in verse 33, he says, who will bring any charges against those whom God has chosen? We are God's people, and he will protect us. Nobody can be against us. So if God is for us, who can be against us? The answer is no one. No matter what hell throws at you, you can be confident in the face of it because God is your good father and he loves you. Fearing God is the antidote to fearing anything else. As we grow in our faith and in our maturity, we experience more and more peace and confidence from God. And the truth is that we can face anyone or anything because we don't stand on our own authority but we stand on the authority of God. And the Bible says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Romans in chapter 8 again, verses 38 and 39, the word says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else, in all creation, in case he missed anything, he said, not anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We may go through things in life physically, emotionally, spiritually, but God is always there with us to go through whatever we're going through. He's always there to protect us. And this morning, I don't have it in your notes, and I don't think I have it on PowerPoint, but I did want to read uh, from Psalm 91 to you. There's 16 verses. I'll try to make it quick. And if, you, and if I'm reading and you can't keep up or understand, write it down. Romans 91 is an amazing uh, chapter of God's protection for us. Uh, Romans 91, verse 1, the word says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your own eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Verse nine, if you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, and you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord. This is the Lord speaking. I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. So I know that was a little long, but if you have time, it's Psalm 91. It's 16 verses, and it is amazing the love that God has for us and the protection he has over us. 
So the first characteristic of a good father is to love that he loves his children. The second is that he protects his children. And here's the third. The third is a good father teaches and trains his children. We all want what is best for our children. We want them to have a better life than we had. So we teach them how to do things the right way, which in my case is easy because I just have to teach them the exact opposite of what I did. So whatever I did when I was young, I just teach Isaiah the exact opposite and he'll be on, his, on the path of righteousness. And from a very young age, we teach them right from wrong. We teach them to be polite. We teach them to use their manners in everything that they do. One of Isaiah's first words that he ever said was, thank you. And that's because over and over again, we'd roll the ball to him. And when he, he would roll it back, we would say, thank you. Thank you. And so we we're teaching him to use his manners. God gives us his word to teach us and train us in righteousness. The book of 2 Timothy verses, uh, chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is God breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And I learned from my brother Kea that the Bible can be an acronym standing for basic instructions before leaving earth. So God gave us his word to teach us and to train us. God's word teaches us how to live and how to love. It teaches us how to live and love the way that Jesus did. It teaches us how to give grace and how to give mercy to others. The word of God teaches us how to have an amazing marriage. Who doesn't want to know that, right? I think that's all I studied the first year of marriage was what does the Bible say about that? The living word of God is the most valuable tool we have in our lives. And it's called the living word because it speaks to us, each one of us in different ways. It's called the living word because it changes lives and it gives life. The living word of God should be the most treasured and valued item we have in our lives. The word of God teaches us and trains us to be righteous. And righteous and being righteous means that we are being declared right in the sight of God. And that we live in a way that honors God. And in view of God's great mercy... All that he's done for us, we should want to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to God, giving up our will for his. And what are we sacrificing anyway? We're sacrificing our old sinful ways of living so that in Christ, we may become the righteousness of God. A good father teaches and trains his children to be righteous. We do that with our own children, and our Father God does that to us. So we call him Abba Father because he has adopted us into his kingdom, and we are his children. So Abba was the first name that we're discussing this morning. The second name that God is known by in the Bible is number two, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. And that means God provides. In the book of Genesis, the Bible says that God is speaking to Abraham and he asked Abraham to offer his son Isaac as a burnt offering sacrifice. Now, not wanting to, but, but wanting to be obedient to God, Abraham takes Isaac up to the mountain to sacrifice Isaac. And the story goes, as most of you know, that Abraham was just about ready to sacrifice Isaac when an angel of the Lord appeared and said, Abraham, Abraham, don't lay a hand on that child. And God provided for Abraham a ram instead to be sacrificed. And so God provided a way out for Abraham. And Abraham took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. And in Genesis chapter 22, verse 14, the King James Version, it says, So Abraham called that place on the mountain Jehovah Jireh because God provided. 
God provided a sacrifice. God provided a way out. God provides for us every day in our lives from the first breath we take to the first thing that we see when we open our eyes. It is a blessing from God. From the meals that we eat to the clothes that we wear, it is all from God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that God will take care of our needs. And any need that you might have today, take it before God and he will supply it for you according to his riches. Not worldly riches, a supernatural, the supernatural riches that can only come from a God who loves you. And God values us. We are important to God. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 to 34, the word says, Jesus is speaking. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothing? clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Yes, we are. And like our brother Kea said this morning, it's so funny you shared this scripture, brother, because I have it right here. I'm in agreement with you. God provides a way out for us when it seems that we are overcome by temptation. First Corinthians um, chapter 10, verse 13. I don't think it's in your notes, but Kea shared it already. It says, no temptation has overtaken you that is uncommon that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will let you, he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Amen. God wants to give good things to his children. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to have joy. He wants us to feel love. He doesn't want us stressed and worried. He doesn't want us fearful or angry. He wants good things for his children. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. I don't think this is in your notes either, but you know the scripture very well. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be open. For which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask? God can be counted on to provide for our needs. And more importantly, God can be counted on to provide for our salvation, our eternal life. If we have nothing more than food, water, water, clothing, and shelter, but we have our salvation that is more than enough, God is providing more than our needs. So the first name is Abba Father that we're studying this morning. The second name is Jehovah Jireh. The third name the Bible shares with us this morning, you can fill it in. It's El Shaddai. And that's Hebrew. And that's, that means God Almighty. God Almighty. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. This is the amplified version uh, of this scripture. Pastor Ray likes to share the message. And um, as I was looking at different translations, I came across this amplified version. Pretty awesome. Uh, sharing amplified with you this morning. The word says, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk habitually before me with integrity, knowing that you are always in my presence and be blameless and complete in obedience to me. I love that amplified version. So this name speaks of God's ultimate might and power. El Shaddai, God Almighty. God has many names and attributes. He is the Almighty. He's the creator of heaven and earth, the builder of everything, the king of heaven, 
God of all mankind, the eternal king. He is the only God, the eternal God, the everlasting God, the maker of all things. He is able to do more things than we can even ask or imagine. He performs wonders that cannot be fathomed and miracles that cannot be counted. God's power is unlimited. He can do anything he wants, whenever he wants, and he spoke the universe into existence. El Shaddai, God Almighty. Furthermore, he answers to no one as to his plans and his purposes. The book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 35. Not in your notes. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? We cannot question God. God has a plan and he has the power to do anything, to do all things. The book of Exodus, chapter 33, verses 20 to 23, speaks of God's glory and God's power. Speaking to Moses, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. The glory of God is so great that Moses cannot look upon it or he would die. God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He is omnipotent, omnipresent, having unlimited power and able to be anywhere and everywhere all at once. El Shaddai, God Almighty. That is our God who we serve. So that's the third name. And the fourth and final name that we'll be covering this morning is number four. You can fill it in is I am. In Exodus, God is speaking to Moses and he's telling Moses to go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to set my people free. And Moses is having a conversation with God because he doesn't feel worthy of the task and he doesn't know what to say. And he goes on to ask God, what shall I say if I go to the Israelites and tell them that the God of your father has sent me? And they ask me, what is his name? What shall I tell them? And this is what God says to Moses. Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. God says to Moses, I am who I am. That is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. I am is the name that God has given himself. Go and tell them that I am has sent you. It all started with I am. And in this situation, God is saying to the Israelites that I am your deliverer. God is everything for us. And through his word, God is saying to us, I am your creator. I am merciful. I am your forgiver. I am your protector. I am your provider. I am your comforter. I am your peace. I am love. And I am with you. God is the creator of all things. He's the beginning and he's the end and he's more than enough. And he is who he is and he will be who he needs to be for all of us. As we stated in the beginning, God has over 950 names in the Bible, and these are just a handful. But if we meditate on these names, we can begin to have an even more relation, uh, intimate relationship with our Father God. We, we, can, we can't think of God as someone who's sitting in heaven, waving his magic finger, making things happen. He is Abba, our Father, who loves us unconditionally. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider, taking care of all of our needs, and he can be depended on. He is El Shaddai, God Almighty, totally in control of every aspect of our lives. He is, I am, the beginning and the end, and everything we will ever need. 
And these are just a few, few names, but my prayer is that by knowing these names and understanding why God is known by these names, that we can begin to trust him as a good father. We can begin to trust him as a provider. We can trust in his almighty plan. We can trust that he is the great I am. And we can call upon these names in our times of need. Amen. So if we can bow our heads this morning. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful, Father God. We're so grateful for your word. We're so grateful for your living word that speaks to us and shares with us everything you want us to know about you. Your names speak of your characters. It's who you are. It's what you've done. And we get to call you Abba, Father. We get to call you Jehovah Jireh because you provide for us. You take care of us because we are your children adopted into your kingdom. And so... You are not only our God that we praise and worship, but you are our Father who loves us and teaches us and trains us. And we're so grateful for your word that it does all of those things for us. We're grateful for Jesus being the example. We thank, we thank you for your love, the love that you have for us, that you're willing to sacrifice your one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And all we have to do is recognize you as Abba Father. All we have to do is accept your free gift of grace that is in Christ Jesus. We thank you for that this morning. Congregation, before we close, we always like to offer an opportunity for those who do not have a relationship with Christ. And I don't know if that's anybody who's here in the building or on Zoom, but we do want to offer an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, because of God's word, John 3, 16, that whoever does so shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so we want to offer you an opportunity by saying a prayer. Now, just by saying these words doesn't automatically mean you have salvation. What it means is you are opening up your heart to receiving Christ this morning. And by saying these words, you're taking the first step into having a relationship with him. But in saying these words, you have to have a heart that means what, what is being said. And so we'll offer you an opportunity this morning. And we want to offer those who, who have been walking and maybe not, not as closely as you once were or as you would like to. We would like to offer you an opportunity to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior and to be the leader of your life. And that you can surrender your will for his will this morning. And we'd also like that those that are here that have been walking for, with the Lord for many decades. And maybe even those of you who've been here been walking with the Lord for a short while, but you are walking boldly and trusting and faithful in God. We want you to say the prayer this morning as encouragement to other brothers and sisters. So if you can join me this morning in saying this prayer, we can say it together and, and uh, lift our hearts up to God. Uh, if you can repeat after me, dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I have done lots of things on my own. I have not always asked for your help or your advice. I want to change that now. This morning, I recognize you as my forgiver, and I want to follow you as my leader. Come into my life as best as I know how, for as long as I know how, I will follow you. So now I say, so that you can hear me, so that I can hear me, so that my neighbor can hear me, and the devil can hear me. Jesus Christ is my Lord. I will follow him and him alone. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me first. Father God, we're just so grateful for your word. We're just grateful for your promise. We're grateful for your love, your grace, your mercy. We're so thankful for the sacrifice of Christ Jesus and shed, the shedding of his blood so that we can find forgiveness in him. So that we, your word says that God made he who knew no sin to become sin so that we may be made the righteousness of God. And, and many of us, I want to say none of us deserve that, God. But you love us so much that you send your son so that we can be made righteous in your sight. And we thank you for that this morning. Father, we thank you for this church family. We thank you for the worship we're about to do. We thank you for just everything you do in our lives. 
the almighty God, El Shaddai. We love you and we thank you. And this morning, we just want to praise you. We want to continue to sing. We want to continue to worship you. We just want to be a blessing to you, Father, as you are a blessing to us. This morning, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. And we pray in your son Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Let's say thanks to Pastor Jason. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, this marks the formal conclusion to our Sunday service. We're going to sing a song this morning, uh, the one we did when we first started, Ancient of Days. We're going to do that. If you want to sing, please feel welcome to uh, join in. If you feel like you want to talk story with your neighbor, please go ahead and start. You don't have to wait until the song is finished. If you're going to head out, we want to thank you again for spending Sunday morning here with us. We know that you could have been plenty of places. And then, and really, if you wanted an excuse to stay home today, the weather would be a good excuse to stay home. Uh, for your safety, you would be staying home. But uh, we thank you for coming this morning. We want to also thank all of you who tuned in on Zoom. We are so grateful for the technology that allows us to join in all together. Whatever you choose to do this morning, have a great rest of your week. Be sure to watch if you're here when you get out on Highway 11. Watch the traffic. Thank you, everybody. Two, three. Thank you.